Hey guys, we're here today at a Freedom Picnic Rally in Humboldt, California, in the heart of the empire up north, where it is very captured here still in terms of a lot of the mentality here. And so I'm very excited to be here today representing the event and Alpha Vedic and Cordal and everything we're doing to build solutions for sovereignty. And this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. And this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I got the light of love, I'm gonna let it shine. I got the light of love, I'm gonna let it shine. Freedom. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? I've been a DJ for 20 years, so I like to hype the crowd a little bit. I want to I want to thank you guys for having us. Uh, Health Freedom, um, the, uh, the Humboldt Freedom Coalition is doing amazing work in this county that is so needed because Humboldt was like the original place of freedom, right? Back in the 60s, the Back to Land movement environmentalism, all that good stuff, and somehow, recently, it's flipped. Um, I'm up in Del Norte County where um, I see a lot of Trump flags. That's like in every uh, front yard where, <laughs> where I'm from. And coming down to Humboldt the last few years, man, a lot of triple masks. <laughs> and it's just kind of shocking. So this is important. It's very important to have these types of get-togethers and gatherings in Humboldt County because we need it. This is a very important place for California. So thanks again, guys, for putting on this event. Um, it's important that we come together in person and celebrate freedom, right? That's what this country is supposed to be about is freedom, freedom of the individual, freedom of self-expression, freedom of us to, to enjoy our lives and love each other for our own independent thought, for being free thinkers. I see this, I see this booth back here. The United States is a republic right on with unalienable rights. And I'll get into that in a second. We've been kind of over the years thought that, you know, been kind of tricked into thinking this, this uh, place is a democracy, a democracy. And no, our founding forefathers understood what happens when you have mob rule. When you have mob rule, you have corruption, you have centralization and you have this cycle of tyranny, always. And with the Republic, the idea is we had landowners who had stake in the game, who were become statesmen, and, and for four years, take on the responsibility of governing and helping basically run the government, limited government. And boy, have we come a long way from that. But we're going back, we're going back. So I'm gonna talk about solutions today I know most people here are probably pretty aware of the problems, right? We've got a lot of problems, but we have amazing solutions. And we have solutions because of individuals like yourselves coming here today. We are here, the time is now, the time is now. And I know we've seen movements in the past, like I was mentioning in the 60s and 70s, where we had people standing up to tyranny and it didn't quite happen. And I feel like it didn't quite happen because we didn't quite, we didn't have the connectivity that we have today. Back then it was still easy to separate and, and basically put people on islands and, and, um, and, and basically pigeonhole people that were um, challenging the system. And now we have a thing called the internet. And the internet is allowing us to connect in ways that is, is really groundbreaking. And so I work in technology, as Catherine was saying, and I work in decentralized technology. Um, I believe that it's an important innovation that's going to allow us to really push forward and create the new. And as Dr. Edith so poignantly said, 
We are here to create the new. Fighting the system's good. Fighting the system's good. Children's for Health Defense are doing amazing work. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., uh, my friends uh, Sayer G um, with Green Mad Info, Alex Zek with Health Freedom for Humanity. Taking on the system is really important. However, as I'm going to talk about a bit today, taking on the system is only going to get us so far if we're working within the system. And so a, a strategy that is really starting to evolve is this idea of creating our own systems, creating our own parallel systems, creating our own economic system, our own schooling system, as Dr. E was just talking about, creating our own um, um, resilient uh, agricultural local food systems using things like permaculture and biodynamic farming um, and developing community systems where we can be resilient with our own ability to transact and do commerce even with our own currency with our own ability to create value right I work in uh, crypto which can be a pretty um, diverse, uh, or excuse me, uh, it, can, it can separate a lot, especially in the freedom movement, because some see it as a, as a means to control us and put us in a digital, put our money in a digital landscape. And I agree, there's a lot of problems with it, but there's also a lot of great that can come from it. And if we truly understand what I'm going to talk about today, which is the true law, what really what law is, um, we can do things like our own uh, digital currencies in a way that cannot be touched by centralized corporate controllers. So what I mean by law, what I'm talking about is I'm talking about natural law. Some would call it universal law. And our founding forefathers understood this. You know, they, many of them were deists. They were very spiritual uh, masons. And they, they understood a lot of the esoteric concepts about what it means to be a living man or woman and how we're tied to the a divine, um, uh, infinite soul, right? We are made in the image of God. And boy, have we come a far, long, long way from being able to even talk about God in the public square. And this is all done by design. It's done by design to force us into a materialistic mindset a mindset that uh, limits our, our understanding of who we are and what our powers are. And it limits us by making us believe that we are uh, a victim of cause and effect. We're just a big accident, right? A great accident is why we're here, which is nonsense. And our forefathers understood that. They understood that we are actually extremely powerful in our own individual will to be able to create in this world. And that is where the innovation and the magic came from the United States for so long. If you think about the history of the US, what are all the great innovations? They all came from a single mind. They came from a single person. And that's what we've always celebrated here in this country, right? It's those great heroes we have, whether that be Mickey Mantle or whether that be John F. Kennedy or whether that be um, Carver Washington or, you, you know, there's so many. And the individual is extremely important, that we recognize the individual and, and the power of the individual. And of course, that is not in vogue anymore with our youth, especially. The statists, the communists, whatever you want to call them, have done an amazing job of, of brainwashing and mind control through corporate media, and through corporate academia, for, uh, for our youth to forget about the power of the individual. And they've, they've inverted that into um, somewhat uh, making us feel like that's selfishness to celebrate the individual. But without powerful individuals, we are lost. We don't have a chance. So we're here to celebrate all of you guys today. Each one of you is an amazing individual. Each one of you has, a, you're on your own hero's journey. That's why we love movies so much. That's the great American tradition, right? Why we love films, because we love the hero's journey. That's why the novel has been so popular for hundreds of years. We get it. We understand in this country the power of the hero. And we're all in our hero's journey. And with great freedom comes great responsibility. And our forefathers understood that they had a sense of morality, even though they weren't perfect, right, <laughs> by any means. There was a sense of morality grounded in God. And if we truly want to be free, sovereign individuals, there is a moral imperative to do what's right. To do what's right. 
and that is based on natural law. It's not based on authority. It's not based on what Fauci says. It's not based on what the CDC says. We know that all, all the great heroes of freedom, the Gandhis, the Malcolm X's, they stood up for what they knew what was right, morally, deep, deep down inside, that was congruent with natural law, with the universal laws that supersede what controllers, what the authorities say is real or what matters. What matters is what is moral, what is true universally beyond what man says. And that is grounded in that great document, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And you can get it right over there in that booth. Give it to your kids give, and uh, make sure to read it uh, to them uh, before they go to sleep tonight. It's that important. Now, within the Constitution, believe it or not, it allows us to contract in the private. Extremely important. And the controllers understood this. And they flipped, they flipped the switch on us in the 1800s after the Civil War by basically creating a corporation called the United States, Inc., all caps. And so now we have a double system. We have a corporatized system, and we have the original republic. And that corporatized system in all caps, we unknowingly but tacitly have signed up for it and contract, contracted with that corporation with our birth certificate, or our parents have. And because of that, because we are contracted and doing commerce with the corporation, Everything they're doing, these mandates, all the stuff, is not unconstitutional. It's actually not, because they did it as a contract. We are tacitly uh, going along with it. And this gets pretty deep, and it, gets, um, it can get quite intense. And uh, this information is, is pretty new to a lot of folks, I know. But also, a lot of people are waking up to this idea that the world is run by commerce, or what's called the Universal Commercial Code. Everything is a debtor and a creditor relationship in this life. And this is empowering information because it means all of our decisions are on us. Everything is an offer in this realm, everything. And we get to decide how we want to essentially accept that offer. It comes down to that moral imperative again. And over the decades, out of really ignorance, and ignorance is not an excuse according to the law, we have given up our rights. We have given up our rights and now we are here at this precipice right now. COVID was the greatest gift because it allowed us to see just how bad it's gotten. And it's woken up a lot of people. Every day people are waking up to this reality that we've given up all of our rights as Americans. Right now, an official can come and take your children away. They can kidnap your children. They can force you to do things that you never thought would be imaginable through laws, which are quote unquote unconstitutional, but are they? Well, we understand that those who are working in Washington DC are actually just employees for the corporation and that we've contracted to work with them. We start to realize that we are in a completely different ball game. We didn't even understand. So what's the solution? The solution, first and foremost, is education. As Dr. E was talking about, you know, taking control of the education system again is, ex is the number one for me. It's getting our kids out of, the, out of those state-controlled um, indoctrination centers, or at least getting involved in those state-controlled indoctrination centers. And, under and starting to educate yourself. I will be speaking next weekend in San Diego at uh, at a um, symposium called Liberty's Horizon, which is all about this stuff. It's all about educating people about the law. And it's, it's not that difficult to understand once you go down a couple of these rabbit holes. And it's very empowering stuff because it comes down to us as the individual to make the decisions in our lives, to do what's right. When we understand that, the world is our oyster. It really is. And so there have been individuals who have known about this for decades. Dr. Bear Lando, who, I, who does AlphaCast with me, who's the founder of Alpha Vedic up on the Smith River, has known about this for decades. And quite frankly, he'd become cynical because he knew people who were trying to do the lawful remedy and were thrown in jail. 
They weren't really lawfully thrown in jail, they were kidnapped and put in jail because they were isolated. And they were isolated because they lacked community. They lacked a consensus of people who understood this truth. So once again, COVID's been the greatest gift because it's allowed for us to wake up to this stuff and how these people for thousands of years have controlled us, these so-called wannabe elites. And as we start to understand this stuff, we can come together in community and start creating the new systems based on moral truth, natural law, like our forefathers envisioned. And we can create new systems. And we can create systems that will replace the failing system, which is what we're seeing right now, that the corporatized structures of this uh, system is failing. And so this is an exciting time an exciting time for us to find what our passions are, find what our role, our, our hero's journey is all about. Because we each have one. We each have a, a role to play right now, whether it be throwing events like this, whether it be starting an, an enterprising new business that is working with all y'all, working with us. We have our own marketplace. We can cater to a fellow awake patriots. Health Freedom for Humanity is this amazing, um, uh, similar kind of coalition to what you guys are doing here, but they're doing it across the country. Alex Zach, he was he's a veteran, he's just turning 30 years old, and came up with the idea of creating, uh, based uh, across the states, um, just fellow awake people to join and, and collaborate with each other. They're building a private membership portal where you can join and you can, they're basically supporting businesses who are not bowing down to mandates. And so they're creating a marketplace so that businesses can have the strength and the resolve to stand up to the unlawful mandates. That's just one example of an enterprising single individual who's doing something cool. Uh, I know a lot of people now who are leaving cities and becoming farmers, right? We need, <laughs> we need to pr uh, produce food. I mean, California uh, is supposed to be the breadbasket for the entire country, and they've shut the water off. They've shut the water off to the big farms throughout central California. Why? I don't know. Renette Sennon was talking about this last month at a, an event I was down in LA. So it's all about decentralization. It's about us not relying on the big farms. In Humboldt County, we've got a lot of grass, a lot of grass that can be converted into high density permaculture farms, food forests. Um, the ability to produce food in a small plot of land is um, very impactful and not hard to do with a little bit of education. So if you have a teenager who seems a little wistful, uh, maybe on the video games too much like our kids of late, <laughs> and you want to inspire them, take them out into a garden, show them how to plant a seed, uh, show them, um, um, there's not, uh, you, you know, seeing a kid's eyes light up when they get a pick of fruit off a tree they planted five years ago is just amazing. And these are the opportunities we have right now is to figure out what is your role to play in the new world that we are creating, that we are co-creating. I believe entrepreneurship is going to explode in the next five to 10 years. I really do. One, as Blaine was saying, it's gonna get really expensive for corporations to play in the game if they wanna to try to uh, uh, hang with all the COVID regulations and all the nonsense that they're gonna be pushing. Um, and if and if you guys think the COVID thing's over, it is not. It's just starting, unfortunately. Uh, uh, out of Illinois right now, the University of Illinois, a, a for-profit company that is actually taking public money, uh, is creating Shield T3, which uh, has, uh, what is it? It's track, test, and um, it's basically a bio, it's a bio-surveillance system that 20 states have already signed up to to create thousands of testing centers connected to biosurveillance um, with, with basically these states are looking to mandate apps like they're doing in China, where if you want to be employed by a state agency, you're gonna have to have these apps that will basically force you to go in to do monthly tests. This is being planned. 20 states have signed up already. So how do we counter that? We counter that through community resilience and creating our own systems. Very simple in the end. We have the power to do it ourselves. So I work with a, a project called Cordal, um, a great example of what you can do totally outside the mainstream. 
uh, a bunch of uh, crypto cypherpunks for the last six, seven years has decided to take it upon themselves and code the new internet. <laughs> kind of a small task, I know. And it's the network's now been live for a year and a half, and it's a really amazing uh, project because it's been completely done in the private. There's no connection to any corporation. There's no patents. Um, everyone's pretty much anonymous. There's no ego involved. And anybody can go join the network now and take part in it and actually share in um, the, um, the abundance that it's creating. Um, that's just one example of, of a bunch of techno nerds who are trying to change the world. And there's a lot of innovation happening right now out of the need for people to figure out ways to create this new world. So it's very exciting. You can check that out at cordal.org. That's with the Q. I'm also involved with doing um, really fun uh, music and uh, sovereignty festivals. Uh, one's called Music and Sky, which we started in 2020 in the heart of the lockdowns in Joshua Tree, California because we weren't gonna let any state agency stop us from coming together and dancing. It's like, it's pretty silly. So we did it and we're, we're gonna be doing the third year now uh, in Central California, I believe. And it's turned, we had Renette Senum speak at it last year, Dave, uh, David Avocado Wolf, um, a bunch of health and wellness um, uh, experts, uh, we do uh, all sorts of fun stuff, yoga, meditation, we dance, we celebrate art, we celebrate the individual creative flow of the human spirit. And it's magical. And it's a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. So I hope you guys, if anything, can, from this talk today, um, can be inspired to get out and find what your passion is and connect with your community and start working together to create these solutions and create these new enterprising fun businesses. And you can do it all in the private. You don't have to go out and get a license. You don't have to be accepted by the, the corporation that is your city. You know, the city of whatever, Arcata, that is a corporation. And you, are, you choose whether or not you want to contract with them. You don't have to contract with them. There's these things called private membership associations that people are developing under trusts that are allowing people to do business in the private with their neighbors and keep the state out of their business. So there's lots of information out there. Definitely look up Liberties Horizon. That's the uh, symposium next weekend. That's with an I, Liberties with an I, Horizon. And that's down in San Diego. Um, there's all sorts of enterprising um, educational platforms. The Law for Mankind uh, called The Sovereign's Way is a favorite of mine which really um, has been put out there to educate us about what it means to be a living man and, or living woman. And we say living man or living woman because when you, um, are, when you are born and you are, your name is signed in all caps in your birth certificate, that is your license for your straw man or basically uh, your living corpse uh, that uh, contracts with the state. And so essentially the state sees you as <laughs> as not even alive. And so when we understand how you're contracting and why they, you wonder why they treat us like this, like cattle. So when you understand what it means to be a living man or woman and to exercise your God-given rights as a sovereign, the world really opens up in fantastic, phenomenal ways. So check out Sovereign's Way. And then I do a podcast every week where we go deep into spirituality, we go into alternative health, uh, we go into uh, the law and we sell product. We sell product to fund ourselves. So we, we grow um, herbs on our farm, on our permaculture farm, and we sell teas. And I tell you, business is booming right now because people are supporting us because we, we live in our truth. We live in our truth as sovereign men and women, and we are catering to fellow awake people. And it's been really fun. So yeah, COVID's been the greatest gift. Thank you, Fauci. It's waking us up. And I, know it, and, and I know it can feel hard. It can feel daunting. It can feel heavy. This hasn't been easy. I'm not saying that. But we're here. We're here today because of it. And we're finding community. And we're finding each other. And really, the greatest wealth is community. It really is. I know of people that have a lot of money. Billionaires. I know crypto millionaires and they're lonely 
And when they go to sell that Bitcoin, first of all, they have to find somebody to transact with them to turn that into fiat dollars. And then they have to take that money and go buy it somewhere. So they might have to wear a mask to go into Costco. And a lot of those people I know are miserable because they don't get it. We are so wealthy because we're here right now with community. And that's really something that's really important I think we need to remember. I know people, in fact, um, Greg Paul, who uh, I talked about the law for mankind, the sovereign's way, um, who they're educating people about law. He lived without money for, I think, four or five years. And we think, well, that's, that's what a homeless person does. <laughs> that's a bum. But he was doing it in a way as a sovereign to prove that by being a moral, high-standing caliber person, he didn't need money because he had community. And out of service to his fellow man, he was good. So the last thing I want to end here is really what it all comes down to is service. You know, one of the greatest examples of that is, is, is Christ, is Jesus, right? Do we have any Jesus fans here? Christ is the, one of the greatest examples of this, right? Service, service to man. I mean, he sacrificed himself, his life, on the cross as the greatest act of service to show us the way. And by living the way through service, all of our problems are answered. What is the worst can happen that can happen to us if we're living by divine decree in a moral way out of service to our fellow men and women? What's the worst that can happen to us? Yeah, we can be thrown into, we can be kidnapped and thrown into a prison, of course. We can be tortured. We can be really hurt physically. And that's where true bravery comes into play. But with community and out of active service, I've seen many of these people standing up, these activists, and they're not being touched. They're not being touched now. And I really believe we have a divine shield over us now. I, I really believe that. I believe we are stepping into our sovereignty and we are being protected. So the time is now to step up, to step up and figure out what your role is going to be moving forward and make sure it's fun. Make sure it's something you want to do. It's your life's path and do it as an act of service. And boy, will life really open up and open up to you in amazing ways. Thank you. Thank you.